it struck me. I, I listened to that song, I don't know how many days in a row. And, uh, you know, it was, it was restoring my peace. And uh, so I naturally, I, I get something like that, and I'm going to send it out to a few people. Because if I'm not walking in peace, I know there are some other people not walking in peace. And so I'm sending it out to people. And, um, you know, it just, it has brought me to this place that I am in awe at the tools the Lord has given us. I am in awe at the Holy Spirit that he wants to share with us. I am just broken at the peace that he will give us in the midst of what we're going through. Are you kidding me? Oh, my gosh. There are people that are off-road, going down lots of rabbit holes. They are tore up. I mean, we're talking the end of times crazy. People need to understand how they are loved and how God has brought peace to them. Uh, okay, on a show of hands, who needs peace today? Walk down the street and say, who needs peace today? God has peace for us in the middle of this grossness that we're going through. And it's, it's not going to get better. I mean, we'll read the end of the book. But there's opportunity for us to show peace, to share peace. So, um... So I'm, I spoke to the artistic side. Now I'm going to speak to the athletic side. Um, Scott and I, you know, we, Scott, he's just amazing. He, that's my husband, for those who don't know. He's, he's just so well-rounded, and he walks in a lot of wisdom. And from very early on in our relationship, uh, Scott's a wrestler. And once a wrestler, always a wrestler. But one thing that has always really, really impressed me about his skill is that um, it, when he's wrestling with somebody, he is really great at uh, paying attention to maybe the right leg, and then he's going to level you with your left leg. The art of distraction. Uh, any good wrestler, I mean, you have your technique, your technicians, and you got your just, you know, brute strength. But Scott is a technician, so his brain's always thinking about always thinking about what's next, what's the next move. And uh, we were at one tournament in Kansas once, and the announcer, he'd always say, you know, who's on, who's on deck? And what, he'd always follow it with, best be thinking about it. Best be thinking about it. Oh, we, we will never forget that because that's what he was doing. He was preparing the kids. They're going to go out to battle, so if you're on the mat, that's great. You're already thinking about it. But if you're on deck, best be thinking about it. So, um, so just putting this together, I, I had this really big sense because of this righteous anger. Scott and I will talk politics because we like to know what's going on in the world. And as we're supposed to, we're supposed to pay attention. And, uh, and one day I heard him say, you know, I just, I just feel like, Everybody is lying to me, and it was a discouraging thing. It was not a happy conversation. It was like, man, everybody's lying to me. I, I have my views. I've done a lot of research. I have a pretty good idea of what I think is going on, but who knows? The world's full of crazy right now. And um, with that, the Lord, he, you know, we're still trying to process all of that, and I feel like the Lord wanted to show me and, and others that, you know, right now, uh, it's, it's not just the enemy that, I mean, the devil wants to distract us, okay? He wants to be thinking, let's, let's focus on the right leg because really I'm taking you out on the left leg. And, and he wants to flatten you so that we're paralyzed, 
we're paralyzed with fear or we're paralyzed with, let's call it an assignment. Maybe we think our assignment is, uh, there's lots of assignments. I think of uh, like Janice, um, used to be Nelson, sorry. Janice, her assignment is to notify people of the things going on in the world. That's a great assignment. Um, there's uh, our, our, our guest speaker just a little bit ago. Her assignment is to go forth and bring healing and, and share God's word. That's an assignment. And uh, there's, oh golly, there's assignments as far as uh, we're going to go do, excuse me, maybe uh, camp. Uh, lots of different assignments that we can have. But the Lord was reminding me that all those assignments are good, Annette, but don't be distracted for one second and think that the assignment should be overshadowed by those assignments. So what is the assignment? Somebody tell me, what's the assignment the Lord gave us? Make disciples. What else? Love. Sergio, what's the assignment? He does. Yes. That's right. Thank you, Sergio. You know, the Lord's not complicated. He's not. He says, go make disciples. Go spread the good news. And instantly, our flesh is like a donkey with our legs out going, no, I don't want to do that. That's not my mission. Oh, my gosh, because we make it so hard. We can scrub the men's toilet. We can rock babies. We can do all these things and show God's love. That's what he would have us do. I really feel strongly, strongly that the Lord will have us uh, have lots of assignments. He does. He gives us lots of assignments. And we walk in them. Uh, but please don't think that they're more important than the assignment of spreading the good news. Of walking in peace. Because people, they, will under, they, they won't understand it. They'll see you walking in peace, and they would much rather jump on this bandwagon over here because it's easier, because we can all get angry. That's, that is the devil making a distraction. That is keeping us, that is, you said it, um, that is the devil. He wants to separate and destroy. He wants, to con he wants to divide and conquer. But the Lord says, I will never leave you or forsake you. When he gave the great commission to go and spread the gospel, did he say, hey, just jump out there and get going? No, he didn't. He said, hang out with me for 10 days. I'm going to send the helper and then go. So why don't be distracted in thinking that this is complicated or it's hard or that it's not necessary because guess what it is necessary I don't know how many syllables you can put in necessary but it's necessary I, I do not think it's an accident right now that the bridge radio that their mission right now is to go and preach to those who have been unreached because don't get me wrong but at the end times which you know we're not in the beginning of times so whatever, uh, at the end times, it, he wants everybody to re be reached. He is not willing that anyone should perish. He's not willing. Not anybody. He paid a big price. He's not willing that that price isn't for everybody. He wants that for everybody. He wants peace for everybody. He wants joy for everybody. He wants us to be active in our communities. He, he would even encourage us to use those assignments to be a platform. How about that? Be a platform to share the good news. I think rather than go down the road of getting all stirred up, 
kind of fun to be mad sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> I just think it's really important that we understand where our peace comes from. And I also think it's really important to understand that um, when we're prepared, we can respond differently. That, that devil would like to have us flattened so that we're down here. But any good wrestler doesn't stay there long. They get right back up, and they're ready. And I, I just know that God would have us be on the ready. Best be thinking about it. Be on the ready. Because when we know what's coming, we can respond. We can respond better. We can respond with peace, and we can share peace. So, you know, that challenges me. It does. It challenges me. Great, Annette. Get up there and tell a word. That's a good word. But already I'm thinking of some folks. You know, I sent that Crowder song to some people that I don't usually send stuff to. Was that terribly hard? Didn't cost me anything. I know there's lots of little things we can do to share God's peace. And so that's what I'm encouraging you with. Um, know where your peace comes from? Be on the ready. Be prepared to do what God asks you to do. And go and spread the good news. You see somebody with no peace, share peace with them. It's a good word, Annette. There was a young man... three-year-old boy, that'd be a young man, right? He, uh, this week he woke up one night in the middle of the night, and he's, ever since he was, uh, been a baby, he would, he, he would wake up when he was in his mom and dad's bed, and he would sit straight up, and he would start pointing at stuff, and, and talking, even though he couldn't talk yet, he would be like making noise and pointing at stuff. And his dad asked me, what do you think's going on? I said, I think he's seeing angels. And kids are very much aware of, of the spiritual realm when they're younger. And he's just always kind of had this spiritually inclined thing. And, and uh, this week, well, last week actually, um, he woke up in the middle of the night and went into his mom's room and said, Mom, there's, there's a man in the closet, and he's got a scar on his face. And she said, he's three now, so he talks, and she said, well, um, was it Jesus? And he said, oh, no, it's not Jesus. It's not a good man. And um, they prayed, and they went in there, nothing was there, and he went to bed. And um, he's just fine seeing things like that. And... Then he, uh, this last week, it was interesting, they had some sickness come into their home last week, and then this week, um, he woke up and he came and told mom, he said, mom, Jesus is here. All right, that's good to know, Jesus is here. And she said, well, did, he, did he tell you anything? And usually he won't ever say anything, because he'll, he'll, there's not the first time he said he saw Jesus in the house. He said, and he said Jesus is here. He said, did he say anything? He said, yeah. He told me, be still. Be still. In Psalm 46, it says, be still and know that I am God. In the midst of a battle, there was a war going on. They were losing the battle. God said, be still and know that I'm God. Know where your peace comes from. Be still. And what a, what a great word to speak to us today from both Annette and from a three-year-old. Just be still. And this was, this was after sickness had come into their home. Hey, just be still. Trust me. Be still.
we all made this statement when the world shut down in 2020 that we weren't going to get busy again. How's that going? How's that going for you? There's a time just to stop and be still. Let me share one passage of Scripture with you this morning out of Psalm 23. Scripture, a lot of you know. How's Psalm 23 start? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. I'm going to read to you out of the Christian Standard Bible. It says this, The Lord is my shepherd. I have what I need. The Lord is my shepherd. I have what I need. Think about David. He's writing this uh, scripture to, um, you know, he's writing this. And David was a shepherd, right? He was someone who tended the flocks and he, was, he understands what shepherding is like. And, and so here he's reminding himself, reminding himself, no matter what's going on, the Lord is my shepherd. There's a lot of other people trying to be our shepherd right now. There's a lot of people trying to lead you right now. There's a lot of voices trying to stir you up and make you stomp your feet with some righteous anger. There, there's a lot of things trying to frustrate you. The Lord is my shepherd. I have what I need. David was reminding himself, I have what I need in the Lord. He was reminding himself that God wanted to meet his spiritual needs. The deepest need every person has on the earth is spiritual in nature. You are a spiritual being living in a physical body. We all have a spiritual need in our life. And here, David was being reminding himself, the Lord is my shepherd, I have what I need. God has all that I need. And that's a great reminder for the church today. That's a great reminder for us as believers. The Lord is my shepherd, I have what I need. I have what I need. And then he goes on and says this in verses two and three. He says, he leads me, he, he, he lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. And verse 3 says, he renews my life. He leads me along the right paths for his namesake. Not only does God want to take care of your spiritual needs, but he wants to give you, he wants to help meet your directional needs. I mean, it's the number one thing every person comes and talks to me about. What should I do? Where should I go? What's next? It's the, it's the biggest issue on most people's life. What direction should I be heading? Because listen, direction changes. Direction changes. I, the direction to become a pastor changed in my life. I was, my direction was go teach in the public schools, go coach, go be a light in a dark place. And my direction changed before I even got that job by going to a Christian school. It wasn't where I wanted to go. But God changed my direction, and in there laid a foundation to help me for what I'm doing today that I still didn't think I'd be doing. But directional needs. He, he lets me lie down in, go back to that verse two, he lets me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside quiet waters. How does God lead you first and foremost? You think about a sheep. Shepherds lead sheep. Where do they lead them to? Water and pasture. Green grass. They lead them to green grass, right? A shepherd knows like, hey, my sheep have eaten down all the grass here. We're going to the next hill. We got to take them to the next place. We can't just stay here where we've eaten everything up. And some believers, we've learned some things in the word and we just want to stay where everything's been eaten up. And God says, he's never like that. He says, I got something new for you. I want to help feed you today. You can't live on yesterday's nourishment. You can't live on yesterday's rhema word, which is where the word becomes alive to you, where the Holy Spirit brings life to you. You can't live on yesterday's word. You need a word for today. You need fresh grass for today. And that is what will lead you and give you direction. He leads you through his word. His fresh grass is, is, is the, the food that you can eat out of his word. And then he also leads you beside quiet waters because you need drink. You need something to drink. And water always references what in the Bible? Holy Spirit. Water represents the Holy Spirit in the Bible that God wants to lead you through his word and through his spirit. It's staying connected to that. Even in the midst of a storm, even in the midst of something horrible happening, he wants to lead you through his word and through his spirit to help change your direction to his direction. He might have directional change for you. And how do you know if you're going to change the right direction? 
It's based on what are you feeding on and what are you hearing from the Holy Spirit, who's your helper, your leader, your teacher, your guide. He wants to meet your directional need. And then it goes on in verse 4 and says, Even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Even when I go through the darkest valley, I will not fear because you are with me. Listen, here's the other maybe biggest need that we all have in our lives, is that God wants to be with you and help meet your emotional needs. He wants to help meet your emotional needs. Even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger for you are with me. He wants to help you through that. Let me give you the greatest tool right here to help you with your emotional needs, how God wants to help you. It's this Christianese language that we just like to dismiss sometimes because I've heard it so many times, I guess I don't need it anymore. And it's these two words, repent and forgive. They're the greatest healers of your emotions. And God gives you all the tool and the ability to find freedom from that. When you, when you realize that you've blown through the peace stop sign, and you are in a, a valley. And you go, oh man, God, I screwed up. I'm so sorry. He's not mad that you screwed up. He's not mad that you blew through the peace stop sign. He just wants you to learn from it. He says, I'm with you. I want to help you. And when you repent immediately like that, things cleansed and you're free to commune with him again. And then repentance heals the deepest of relationships around us. Now the world tells you, like, hold grudges as long as you possibly can. Be angry with people as much as you can. Let your emotions destroy you. That's what the world says. But when you repent and when you forgive, you bring healing and reconciliation between another person and yourself, and you find freedom and healing. Even in the darkest of valleys, think about the dark valley that you go through. It's not about what you might have lost physically. It might not be that you lost a job. It's the emotions that are going through your life from losing that job. It might not be because of a relationship that's going through a struggle. It's the emotions you feel because of the relationship going through a struggle. And God says, I want to meet your emotional needs. Even when you go through the darkest valley, I'll fear no danger, for you are with me. And the verse finishes by saying this, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now a shepherd, he has a rod and a staff, and sometimes we think that rod is there to beat the sheep. We think that's the mentality of God. God has a rod because he's going to beat me into submission. No, that's not God at all. He has a rod to do what? What's a shepherd have a rod for? What's he beating away? The wolves. He's beating the enemies away. He's beating those things that are going to come come against the sheep. God has a rod, and it's directed towards the enemy. That rod is taken out on the enemy, not on you. But if the enemy can trick you and make you think that God's trying to take you out, you'll live in misery and defeat. God has a rod, but it's not intended for you. It's intended to protect you. We call that the power of God. The power of God is the rod of God on display under your life. And then he has a staff where he he, he sees that sheep that's kind of wandering along and, and not hearing his voice and not beckoning his call. And so he just reaches that staff out and he hooks that sheep. And you know, at first you don't like that, do you? But then once he turns that direction, turns the gaze, then the sheep starts coming back. And sometimes I need that. Sometimes that's a good thing for me. I need that little nudge from the Lord that says, hey, this is actually what's best for you over here, Mitch. It's never out of beating you and out of condemnation. It's out of love. I had this great encounter with God one, one Tuesday morning. I was in here worshiping, and, 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 and uh, this upbeat song was on, and it was a joyful song, and I was worshiping, and I was dancing, and I was free, and I was enjoying God. You know the greatest freedom you have in worships when you're by yourself? You can be whoever you want to be, and you don't have to worry about what it says or thinks. And I'm just free before the Lord. I'm worshiping God, just enjoying myself, laughing and, and dancing so much I was out of breath when the song got over. And I got down at the altar right here because I need to get on my knees and breathe. And the Lord said, Mitch, I want you to forgive your enemies. And I started laughing. I was full of joy. (laughs) I don't have any enemies, God. I'm good. Life's good. We're all good. I'm not mad at anybody. And then he dropped two names in my heart. That was his staff. He said, I want you to you should forgive your enemies, and I want you to pray for them. What? Just with this staff, Mitch, I know I want to help you find freedom. 
I want you to forgive, and I want you to pray for your enemies. And I did right there at the altar. I took about 10 minutes. And I, you know, the Holy Spirit, when he does that, when the Holy Spirit asks you to forgive somebody, guess what he's doing? He's giving you the power to do it. Because forgiveness is a partnership with the Holy Spirit. And because his, it was there, it was like all my animosity, all my angst was easy just to like whoosh, dump out. And then I could actually, with the help of the Holy Spirit, pray for them. And God brought healing to me. To me. By taking his staff and saying, hey, right over here. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That word co comfort, actually, in some translations, is simply repent. Your rod and your staff, they help me repent. It's, it's almost like a dirty word in today's world, repent. I don't got anything to repent for. I haven't done anything wrong. I'm perfect. Everybody else is wrong. Even if I did something wrong, I don't need to repent. That must, that's a sign of weakness. No, it's not. The greatest grace you'll find in your life. God wants to meet your spiritual needs, your directional needs, your emotional needs. In verse 5 it says this, You're, you prepare a table before me. If he's preparing a table before you, what do we find at a table? Food. Sustenance. He wants to meet your physical needs. He, he wants to meet your needs. Philippians, it says, it says that he wants to meet your needs. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Sometimes in the presence of your enemies, when everything's going wrong and nothing, you don't have to trust God for a table when everything's perfect, right? But when nothing's going right and you don't have the provision you want and, you, and things seem to be falling apart, that's when David reminded himself, you prepare a table before me, God. I'm your sheep and you're, I'm, I'm the sheep, you're the shepherd. It's your job to feed me Right here in the presence of my enemies, you prepare a table before me. God wants to meet your physical needs. And then it goes on and says this, you anoint my head with oil. You anoint my head with oil. Anointing in the Old Testament was where they would pray for somebody and they would anoint them with oil and they were praying for healing. O anointing someone represents physical healing. We anoint people today with oil. When the elders gather together, we anoint them and we believe and we trust and we pray for healing over them. We're not the healer. God's the healer. But right here it says, you anoint my head with oil. You care about my physical needs, God. My cup overflows. You know, right now, your cup might not be overflowing, but you might need to declare God, to God, God, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and I'm declaring today that my cup overflows. Even though I'm struggling right now, I'm declaring, God, that my cup overflows because I'm yielding to you. And you said you would meet my spiritual needs, my directional needs, my emotional needs, my physical needs. And then it goes on in this last verse and says, only goodness and faithful love. In the King James it says, goodness and mercy will follow you, will pursue you all the days of my life. Goodness and mercy are following you all the days of your life. You want to know why? Because you know Jesus. Because you know Jesus, goodness and mercy is following me everywhere I go. Mercy is faithful love. It's the overwhelming love that God has for you. It's following me. It's kind of David was shifting his attitude and reminding himself, hey, it might look ugly out here. It might not look great, but I have all I need. God's going to meet my spiritual needs. He uses his, his word and his spirit to take me to fresh grass and let me drink of his water. And through that, he meets my directional needs. He leads me. He meets my emotional needs. Even though I'm in a valley, he's got a rod and a staff, and they comfort me. They help me. And he says, even, even in that, in the presence of my enemies, you prepare a table for me. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. And only, I'm going to remind myself, the only two things following me some of us, we think, oh, I'll tell you what follows me, destruction to despair. I'll tell you what follows me, brokenness. I'll tell you what follows me, abandonment. I'll tell you what follows me, loneliness. And if that's what you think, that's how you'll live. But when you start reminding yourself that God wants his goodness and his faithful love to not just follow you, but pursue you, only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life. And then it says, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. 
Come on up, Drew. I will dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. God is concerned about your eternal needs. He says for eternity, for as long as you live, I'm going to let goodness and I'm going to let my faithful love pursue you and follow you and chase you down. That's what a shepherd would do. That's what God does. You might be a sheep and you're wandering over here in the thistles and that shepherd's running over there and saying, hey, come on, I love you, get out of the thistles. You might be coming over here and you've fallen, you've fallen off of a cliff and he says, hey, come here, let me pick you up out of that cliff and get you back on solid ground. That's his goodness and his faithful love following you and chasing you down everywhere that you go. The Lord is my shepherd, I have what I need. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He renews my life. David's reminding himself, this is what God does for me. He renews my life. He leads me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. That's where I'm going to be. Come on, stand with me. Father, today we pray. We thank you, God, that you are more than enough. We thank you that no matter what voices are shouting in the world, they're going to be drowned out by your voice. God, we ask you for that today. Would you drown out the voice of the world? That we would hear your voice above it all. Holy Spirit, we need directional, we need directional cues. We need to know where to go to lunch today. We need to know what we're supposed to do with our time tomorrow. We need to know who we're supposed to bless this week. We need directional needs. We ask you, Holy Spirit, would you speak to our hearts? Father, we can't live on yesterday's manna. We need fresh manna today. We need a fresh rhema word today. God, as we take time to look into your word, would you give us the fresh word that we need today that gives us direction? God, you never said you would leave us in the valley, that you'd be there with us. We would not have to live with overwhelmed emotions and frustration and depression, but you would take us out of that valley. Lord, we're thankful that you prepare a table before us even in the hardest of days. You are our provider. You're the one that meets our needs. Father, I thank you. I thank you that there's, there's two things chasing me down and they are pursuing me and it is your goodness and your love. And I just want to be overrun with your goodness and your love, God. I want to be consumed with your goodness and your love. Would you keep chasing me down? I give you permission today, God, to chase me down with your goodness. Reveal your goodness to me. Pour your love out upon me, God. I give you permission today to come after me with all that you are. And I thank you, God, that I have eternal security, that I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, as long as as I shall live. Amen and amen. Come on, sing this with us before we go today. And I is for when you stand undefeated Every battle you won I am who you say I am Come on, sing it out. Make this declaration. Crown me with confidence. I am seated in the heavenly place, undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. Oh, oh. So when I lift my voice and shout, every has given me oh and I open up my mouth miracles start breaking out I have the authority Jesus has given me oh cause you are my champion 
Before we go here, I just want you to just to check your heart and where you're at. Today could be the best day ever for you. Just a great tag team fashion. I'm going to let Annette lead this. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, you know, I just can't. I just can't. I just can't go away from here without reminding us that it starts with Jesus. Jesus has been pulling on your heartstrings for a long time. This might be the 10th time you've been to a service where your heart's on fire because Jesus has been calling you. He's been wooing you. He says, it starts with me. Jesus says, it starts with me. It's my heavenly father, but I came so that I could pay for your sins and I could go prepare a place for you. You know, I talked about peace and you're not gonna get that peace unless you start with Jesus. So, you know, I'm old school. I'm not about bowing your head and closing your eyes if you wanna accept Jesus. If that's what you gotta do, do it, accept Jesus. But I'm about standing up boldly and saying, okay, you created me, you know what I need, and I am at the point in my life where I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say yes. And when I'm done saying yes in here, I'm gonna go so tell somebody out there, I said yes. I said yes to Jesus and he has given me a peace that I cannot even explain. I cannot even explain. I cannot even explain the peace that he has given us. He's got it right there right there just say yes who says yes to Jesus who has said yes to Jesus in the past who is saying yes to Jesus today who is saying yes to Jesus today for the first time ever publicly Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And for those people who are saying yes to Jesus today for the first time publicly, I am praying, Father God, that your word remains faithful and you just pour out your Holy Spirit on them. Ugh, like the oil. Like the oil that they poured over the heads. That physical, physical feeling of Holy Spirit peace. I thank you, Father God, for that. Thank you that we don't stop until every last person says yes to Jesus. Amen. Right now there's, there's I believe the Holy Spirit's going to put somebody on your heart that he wants you to sow seed into this week that doesn't know him. So we ask you right now, Holy Spirit, who does not have peace because they don't have Jesus that's in our life, that you want us to sow seeds of love into this week and to boldly proclaim the difference Jesus can make in their life. Right now, would you place people on our hearts? Would you give us the one that we get to invite to you this week? Your the only job you have is to invite and to share. So just ask him, Holy Spirit, who do you have for me this week? It might be somebody you sit by at work. It might be somebody you live by. It might be somebody you live with. Who is Jesus telling you right now? He wants you to make aware. He, he wants you to tell this person about him.
Father, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Lord, there's people in this room, there's people online that are making decisions for you right now, that are encountering your grace new and fresh today, some for the very first time. Father, I pray right now for each and every one of those people as they are surrendering their hearts to you, as they are making a fresh commitment to you, I pray that your peace would flood their soul, that your peace would wash over them today, and they would no longer be distracted and by the agonizing voices, but they would hear your voice and your word. Right now, would you change hearts in this room as you're touching them? And right now, we pray for, who's that person on your heart? Who's that person? Pray for them right now. Lord, we pray for that person. We pray for that person. I heard the word Carl, and I heard the word Sean. Lord, I pray for Carl and Sean right now, God. I pray for them in the name of Jesus, Lord, that they would come to know the saving power of Jesus Christ. Right now, in Jesus' name, I pray for those that are with us that we need to share the truth with. Who is that that you need to pray for right now? God, we pray that you'd give us a divine opportunity to share love with them. We pray, Lord, for an open door and an open conversation. And we thank you, Lord, your word says, if we'll open our mouth, that you'll fill it. I thank you, Lord, for the testimony shared with me a few weeks ago that somebody simply put on a service from a few weeks ago and they were able to lead their good friend to you by watching a service with them. God, I pray that you'd give us the strategy and the words to share with those that are lost. Lord, today is the day for salvation. Today is the day of revival. Today is the day for people's lives to be changed. Lord, I thank you, Lord, in advance right now for the hundreds and thousands of people that are coming to know you this fall. I thank you, Lord, for the thousands of people in Kearney, Nebraska, that are going to surrender their lives to you for the first time in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for that right now, that in this world there are people turning to you right now. And we ask for that, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that in places like Iran and Afghanistan, that's where the fastest growing church is because they're under persecution. And as we feel a smidge of persecution, we thank you, Lord, it's turning people to you. Lord, help us to be the light and the salt you've called us to be. And we pray for them. Who is it right now? Pray for them by name. I pray for Carl and Sean right, by, right now, Lord. I pray that you'd open their hearts. You begin to, to begin to open and till the soil, Lord, that when the word comes, they would receive the soil and they would find you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. Come on, thank God for his word today. Amen and amen. If you want to drop your connection card and your offering on the way out, we would love for you to do that. And uh, listen, if you made a decision for Jesus, if you said, hey, I want to surrender my life to Jesus, would you come and share that with me? Be bold enough to share that. Or you can mark it on your connection card as well. But we'd love for you to come and share it with us. Be blessed. Have a great day.